It's the fruitful time of year again, early autumn, when nature's at its most generous. This year there's an amazing crop of berries and apples. My favourite thing to do, food and foraging wise, has got to be making juice from apples that I've gathered. Windfall, begged or borrowed, there's all sorts of ways to get your hands on some. So many apples go to waste each year, it's shameful. Far too many are eaten by sheep, cows, slugs, or are left to rot on the ground. Where's the sense in that? Look over your neighbour's fence. They've probably got a tree heavy with fruit. Ask them for some. I did. Give them a wash to remove debris such as slugs and animal crap and chuck away any obviously rotten ones. You'll need a press. This one is about five litres. It wasn't expensive, about 90 quid if I remember correctly. An apple corer makes light work of coring and chopping your apples ready for scratting or pulping. This device is a bar with a sharpened end which fits to a standard drill which makes light work of pulping your apples. It came with a bucket which again was not expensive, under 20 quid. The apples need to be pulped as the pressure needed to extract juice from even quartered apples would be huge. I usually give the drill a few passes, take off the lid and check the consistency. The more runny the pulp, the more juice will be extracted. Once the segments of apple have been pulped, pour this mixture into the press. It goes into the net which sits within the wooden slats of the pressing cage to keep the pulp separate from the juice. Place the wooden plates around the spindle and get ready with the big jug as the juice will start running even before you start compressing the mixture. Screw down the tightening nut and you're ready to go. Once the pressing is complete and the juice has stopped flowing, pour the collected juice into a gallon demijohn. Now, I know that resembles river water, and that's just the juice oxidising. Adding a teaspoon of pectolase will break down the pectin overnight, and the sediment will fall to the bottom of the jar, and you'll be left with clear golden nectar. Well, this is what it looks like the morning after. Look at that. All that's left to do is to siphon the juice into bottles. It'll keep for a few days in the fridge. If you want to keep it for longer, you'll need to pasteurize it. It doesn't take much to further refine this stuff into cider. Add a teaspoon of yeast to a gallon of juice and an airlock and sit back and wait for the apples to ferment. Ah, proper job. <laughs>